Welcome to this edition of American Railway, which concentrates on the areas ringed in the southeast of the Flickertail State, North Dakota, and across the state border in Minnesota, the Gopher State. There are hundreds of lakes in this region which have been omitted from this map for the sake of clarity. Heading west through Minnesota into North Dakota on the Burlington Northern and Santa Fe Northern Transcon, locations include Detroit Lakes, Lake Park, Manitoba Junction, and the Cheyenne River Bridge just west of Luverne. On the BNSF Main West from Castleton, we captured trains at places including Tower City, Valley City, where the track crosses the Canadian Pacific, then on to Sanborn and Cleveland. After Otter Tail Valley Railroad operations are glimpsed through Sabin, we visit the BNSF track through Wapaton and the CP through Elbow Lake. The Staples subdivision of the BNSF Northern Transcon runs through Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Filming locations were at the Amtrak station in the late afternoon and evening, and the following morning before daybreak alongside Highway 10. The Canadian Pacific track running north-south through the city seemed strangely quiet. We saw no trains on that route during our visit. Locomotives in five different liveries are at the head of this eastbound manifest. Leading is a C44-9W wearing the Heritage 2 paint scheme, followed by a C41-8W in Heritage 3, then a GP28M in Burlington Northern Green, a GP35U in Santa Fe, and a GP38-2 in Heritage 1.
The city of Detroit Lakes was founded in 1871 and grew rapidly with the arrival of the Northern Pacific Railroad. Population in 2013 was estimated to be just under 9,000. The SD70 Mac heading this westbound manifest bears a sixth different paint scheme carried by BNSF locos, the Burlington Northern Executive Livery. The second loco is an AC44 CW number 5612. These tank cars carried the UN Dangerous Goods Code 1075 for liquefied petroleum gas. The last train through before sunset was coal hoppers powered by an Evolution Series 44AC and two SD70 Max, numbers 9592 and 8975.
The station is served by the Amtrak Empire Builder, which runs between Chicago and Seattle and Portland, with the train dividing at Spokane, Washington. However, the station has little more in the way of facilities than an enclosed waiting area for passengers for the westbound train at 2.20 a.m. or the eastbound train calling at 3.15 a.m. One of our intrepid cameramen dragged himself out of bed before sunup. This train of grain hoppers are heading west with an ES44C4 and a C44-9W in charge. The track here lies parallel to Highway 10. Twenty minutes later, a pair of Dash 9s with an AC44CW followed with an intermodal. They pass an eastbound manifest with two more Dash 9s on point. The CSX transportation loco is a C40-8 followed by a BNSF rebuilt GP39E that started life as a Jeep 30 in 1962 for the Southern Railway.
As there are many lakes in this region, it is no surprise that Detroit Lakes is a popular leisure destination, offering parks, camping, hiking and mountain biking trails, fishing and wildlife. As dawn approaches, an ST-70 Mac and an ES-44 DC head east. This train consisted of 105 crude oil tanks, plus a buffer vehicle at each end. Following the BNSF Staples Sub west from Detroit Lakes towards North Dakota, our cameras were separated at filming locations near Lake Park and Manitoba Junction, before a brief visit at Hawley.
A pair of SD70 ACE locos are on the head of this eastbound unit crude oil train. A third ACE will be the distributed power unit at the tail. Between the two box cars acting as safety buffer vehicles, there are 100 tank cars in this train. The city of Lake Park, with a population of about 900, lies just to the east of this location. An ES44DC is at the head, with a C41-8W number 931 in very faded war bonnet livery.
This train had 118 crude oil tank cars between the two buffer vehicles. The DPU on the tail will be a Dash 9. Slightly west of Manitoba Junction, two SD-70 Max are powering east. If you are waiting nearly five minutes at a grade crossing for this train to pass, you may be tempted to count the hoppers. There were 115 on this occasion. DPU is another ST70 Mac.
The very faded war bonnet is Dash 9, number 698. Less than 10 minutes later, an intermodal chased the stack train on the other track, intending to overtake it. The last time we filmed the Jeevo at the head, it was at Kaiser, New Mexico.
After this train had passed, everything went very quiet, so we continued west to Hawley, where we found SD70 Aces numbers 9267 and 9378 tied down due to a maintenance of way possession. We left the northern Transcon for a while in search of more activity. In this section, we travel south from Fargo on the Otter Tail Valley Railroad to Sabin, then to the BNSF and Red River Valley and Western Railroad tracks through Wapaton, and onward to the CP route through Elbow Lake. The Otter Tail Valley Railroad operates between Moorhead, Minnesota and Fergus Falls to the southeast. We found a train switching on the outskirts of Moorhead and chased it to Sabin. The Green Leader is a GP40 built for the Baltimore and Ohio in 1969. Another GP40 is second in red, which started out with Norfolk and Weston in 1966. Former Illinois Central GP38-2, dating from 1970, is third in line, while coupled to the train in the striking bespoke otter tail livery is a GP40-2LW that began life with the Canadian National in 1974. The post office named Sabin began operation around 1881. There were an estimated 551 residents in 2015. The second location here will be near the Red River Valley and Western Railroad engine house in Breckenridge, Minnesota. But first at Wapaton, North Dakota, our cameras were set up near the intersection of three routes on the west of the city where it was discovered that a maintenance possession on the BNSF track arriving from Castleton would be lifted once the track machines were clear. Strong blustery wind conditions made filming from the North Dakota 13 overbridge near impossible, but the track layout can be clearly seen in this view, with the two Red River Valley and Western lines in the background combining at Oaks Junction, continuing to join the BNSF at Wapaton Junction.
Once the maintenance of way vehicles were clear, an eastbound unit grain train crawled into view headed by a Dash 9 and two ES-44 DCs. After a brief signal stop, the journey resumed. The Wahpeton population of about 7,800 is approximately twice that of its twin city, Breckenridge, across the river in Minnesota. However, it could be argued that Breckenridge has the most famous son. Place kicker Errol Mann was born there in 1941 and was part of the Oakland Raiders team that won Super Bowl XI. Thirty minutes later, two Dash 9s and a Canadian Pacific Jeevo head west on the Red River Valley and Western Track towards Windermere.
A claim for fame for Wahpeton and Breckenridge is that they have the only golf course in the USA that lies in two states. This train had only 75 hoppers. It was all quiet for an hour before a rake of empty crude oil tanks returned north towards Castleton. We filmed that Dash 9 once before, at Sandpoint, Idaho. At the tail of this train of 105 tanks between the buffer vehicles, distributed power will be a C41-8W and an ES44C4. Another hour passed before a manifest followed northbound with an SD-70 Mac in the Dash 9 sandwich.
That was the last train that we saw that day. At sunrise the following morning, we checked out the Red River Valley and Western Engine House, just across the state border. On view were a rebuilt GP10, built for Boston and Maine in 1957 as a GP9, 341 series locos, that are GP15C models, also rebuilt from GP9s, and two 20 series locos rebuilt as GP20Cs from GP20s. Thanks to railroad staff information that nothing would be running for at least that morning due to track maintenance, we travelled southeast to the CP track at Elbow Lake. Both locos in charge of this westbound train of crude oil empties are AC44CWs. The blue leader is CEFX lease loco number 1059 in harness with CP number 9534. This train had only 98 tanks behind the buffer vehicle. The city of Castleton, North Dakota features in this section, but first we visit Karnak on the KO subdivision of the BNS Northern Transcon. The camera is positioned near the western end of the Cheyenne River Bridge. BNSF-9 number 4780 leads CSX SD-70 Mac number 4818 hauling 100 hoppers. Karnak is the name of the railway location at the west end of the bridge. The nearest city is Hannaford, with the city motto, Focused Future, Proven Past, population 130-ish. The Cheyenne River Bridge was constructed by the Great Northern Railroad in 1912.
Castleton, we filmed by grade crossings to the west of the city, one being at Surrey Junction, where one track heads west towards Jamestown, while the other line forks northwest to join and cross the northern Transcon at Nolan. Another location was on the edge of town, where the Red River Valley and Western Railroad line approaches from the south. These Macs are heading west towards Jamestown. Another Mac provides distributed power on the tail. In strong winds and persistent rain, it proved impossible to point the cameras east without getting droplets on the lens. Crude oil empties again, but these Norfolk Southern Jeevos are heading northwest towards Nolan. Yet more crude oil empties, heading towards Jamestown again, 
but this time an ST70 Ace leads an ES44DC and an ST70 Mac. We're going to go to the city now to look for some shelter. We arrived on the west edge of town to find maintenance of way equipment pulling out of the sidings and crossing to take possession of the main on the far side from this position, which would result in single line working and a speed restriction through Casselton. This is a dynamic tamping express machine made by Plasser and Thurer. A grain train has arrived at the junction on the Red River Valley in Western Track and waits to head west on the BNSF. This is a Lorem shoulder ballast cleaner. We filmed one of these machines hard at work, creating a huge cloud of dust in Bovina, Texas, in volume 13 of this series, named High Plains Freighter. The ethanol plant in the distance makes an imposing backdrop. Now that the track machines have switched to the far side, trains will start to run through again. The first will be crude oil tanks heading east behind 3-9s. About two months after our visit, a westbound train conveying soybeans derailed less than a mile away to the west from this location and was struck by an eastbound train of crude oil tanks like this one. The collision ruptured tanks and ignited the oil, causing explosions that were heard several miles away. Castleton and the surrounding area was evacuated as a precaution after the resulting fireball created a massive cloud of black smoke. You may have seen photographs of the incident in Trains magazine. Double stacks followed east, emerging from the gloom, powered by another Dash 9 and a Norfolk Southern C40 8W.
the grain train can now continue its westbound journey. This Kansas City Southern SD70 Ace is sporting their Southern Bell livery. The Northern Pacific Railway established a station here for homesteaders to develop a town. The president of the railway at that time was George Washington Cass, the town being named in his honour. Castleton was founded in 1876 and incorporated as a village four years later, by which time the population had grown to 376. Nowadays, the population is around 2,500, making it the 20th largest city in North Dakota. The rain was less heavy at Surrey Junction the following morning. Passing the area of track maintenance, this train accelerates northwest towards Nolan.
A pair of NSGVOs are returning north with empty oil tanks with the assistance of a BNSF-9. The rain falls more heavily as the local heads northwest towards Nolan. Number 2896 was built in 1964 for the St. Louis Southwestern and has been rebuilt GP 38M standard. The second Jeep is a 39-2. The last time we filmed 2896 it was hauling Boeing 737 fuselages through Seattle. Closer to Castleton, both water balls are visible in the backdrop and the 10 miles an hour speed restriction past the track maintenance work is much more noticeable. Behind the SD70 Mac on point, the CSX Transportation ES44DC has been downrated so is now designated ES40DC.
With the end of this train in sight, but taking an age to reach us, we will head deeper into North Dakota. Following the BNSF west from Castleton, this phase of the journey begins at Sanborn and takes in scenes at Jamestown, Cleveland and Medina before returning east to Valley City and Tower City. We conclude with views at the east end of the Cheyenne River Bridge near Luverne. Arriving just before daybreak, we found two coal trains about to meet. SD70 Ace number 9177 is in the spur. Sanborn, named after an early settler, was founded in 1879 and a post office began operation there the same year. In 2014, the population was estimated to be 193.
In Jamestown, after over three hours had passed, the only loco we found was a TR2A switcher belonging to the Independent Locomotive Service, in sidings by the Red River Valley and Western track. There were a number of places where the sunken land had taken the road below lake level. The strong wind in driving rain made it bitterly cold, and our cameraman here shivered complaints about the leak he discovered in his waterproof trousers. An SD-70 Mac and ACE combination head east on another loaded unit coal train. Just to the east of this location lies the city of Cleveland, population 82, which was founded in 1882 with the opening of the post office there. DPU on the tail is another SD70 Ace, number 8755. Another eastbound unit coal train is approaching Medina, with a pair of Max on point. The location of this city was originally known as NP No. 11 siding, a watering point on the Northern Pacific Railway. Today, Medina is known as the gateway to Chase Lake, a national wildlife refuge that is the main breeding ground for the American white pelican.
Having returned east to Valley City, where the BNSF High Line Railroad Bridge spans the edge of the city and the track operated by Canadian Pacific, we position one camera next to the CP line and the other on the hill to the north with a panoramic view. Eastbound, GVO number 6197 leads dash 9 number 4939 across the bridge. Construction of the High Line Bridge over the Cheyenne River was completed in 1908. At 3,860 feet long and a height of 162 feet above the river, it remains one of the longest and tallest single-track railroad bridges in the United States. This train carried 30 wind turbine blades. A northbound Canadian Pacific manifest, powered by a pair of AC 44 CW locos, is on its way.
When the railroad was first extended here in 1874, the settlement laid out was called Worthington. A post office was established that year and has continued to operate with the name Valley City since 1878. Due to the many crossings of the Cheyenne River within the city, it is sometimes known as the City of Bridges. The estimated population in 2015 of 6,669 makes Valley City the 13th largest city in North Dakota. The singer-songwriter and actress Peggy Lee made her professional singing debut in Valley City over the KOVC radio. The Cheyenne River Bridge is of similar construction to the High Line Bridge in Valley City, but is shorter at 2,736 feet long. This time the camera is on the eastern bank of the river, near Laverne, rather than Karnak on the west that featured earlier in the programme.
We very much hope that you have enjoyed the changing scenery and variety of motive power on this journey exploring the borderlands of the Flickertail and Gopher states. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you'll be tempted by other titles in the American Railway series.